Hey, this is Brad with BlackOS.com and I'm here with Jason from BlackOS.com as well. And we're gonna walk you through some of the basic entry level trail camera 101 questions we get a lot. Um, basically, we wanted to do this video. I'm new to trail cameras. Jason's more seasoned in the trail camera department. Um, so I just, uh, I've always relied on him and I listened to a lot of the phone calls of, from customer service. We kind of came up with a, a little checklist of, of how to get started in trail cameras. Um, let's, Jason, why don't you walk us through SD cards to start with. What, uh, what do you need in an SD card? Yeah, so uh, you'll definitely need a class 10 SD card. Um, it's, you'll see on the little SD card that has a little circle with a 10 inside it. That's uh, kind of like the processor in, within the SD card. Um, you'll definitely need one of those in any camera in today's lineup, whether it be Stealth Cam, Browning, Moultrie, Spy Point, you name it, you'll need a Class 10 SD card. And do you have to be careful about the size of the card that you select? Will any camera take any 100 gig card? Or Every camera nowadays will work up to a 32 gig card. Um, some will take up to a 512 gig card. Um, you don't really need that big of a card unless you're leaving it for a long period of time or you have a really high resolution camera like the Stealth Cam 4K cameras. Gotcha. Makes sense. And as far as buying cameras as a package, sometimes they'll come with the card and the batteries. Um, sometimes they won't. So you'll have to be careful. I've made that mistake as well where you'll have to go out and buy your own uh, batteries and an additional card. Sometimes they'll come with it, sometimes not. Uh, check the package you're buying. And if you are gonna leave your cameras over the winter time, you'll definitely wanna try and buy uh, lithium batteries. They seem to last longer in the cold weather. Uh, that's been a tip that I've learned from a few other camera guys. Gotcha, no, that's a great tip. Um, now, going back to cameras now, what, uh, what do you look for, say, in a camera? Uh, what do you get versus an entry-level camera? As that price scale goes up, what generally changes? Um, the megapixels and the processor, all the guts inside the cameras, um, they're going to be a little bit better quality within each one to give you, and that's what you're paying for that extra price, is to get a crisper image or uh, better audio and video on your, on your videos. Uh, that's really what you're really tr getting in your, your higher end cameras. Gotcha. Um, one question we get a lot is, well, obviously if it's got more megapixels, that means it's a better camera. Is that that's the case? That's not necessarily the case. Like within two to six megapixels, you're gonna see the exact same results, no matter if it's daytime or nighttime. Yeah. Uh, someone explained it to me. It's kind of like buying a car with just putting a bigger engine in it. You'll get uh, more horsepower, but if you don't have the drivetrain and the transmission, you can't really transmit that horsepower to the wheels. So you're not really gaining too much. It just has a bigger engine. Yeah. Um, and I think that that analogy is a little bit the same with trail cameras. As far as settings, what, uh, what generally changes from entry level up to the higher end cameras? What do you generally get more settings or what, what, what goes different there? Yeah, so um, on all the like QS, um, brow time cameras, PX series cameras, those are all gonna have the same settings, um, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you get into the G series or the 4K cameras, you can really customize it. You can change it down to the second that you want it during the delay. Mm -hmm. Um, you can change every single megapixel on there. You can actually change the burst mode. So if you want a picture, if you want five pictures in a burst mode, but you don't want them like right in a row, you can make them take five pictures within every three seconds. So then it's like five pictures within 15 seconds. Let's talk about security and camera security. Um, first off, why? Why go through the hassle of getting, you know, security devices for it? Um, cable locks, boxes, kind of walk us through the mentality there. Yeah, so um, out west, it's a big problem with uh, security. Um, you're really only trying to keep the honest people honest. Um, so I like using the, the cable locks from HME. Um, this works really good. We have a unique uh, four pack of cable locks here at Black Ovis 
where all four cable locks use the exact same key so you don't have to walk around in the woods like a janitor carrying a whole bunch of keys <laughs> for every single uh, cable lock you got. I think the only time I've used the box itself was uh, setting up bear, uh, bear stations yeah, where- Those are good to use for that. I think maybe, uh, you know, 10% of the cameras we set up had a bear um, pull them off the tree and, and give them a little chew. So um, that's when the bear box would, would come in handy there. Yeah, for sure. Um, all righty, so now let's uh, segue a little bit into, we've got the camera set up, we've got it secured. Um, we're taking pictures on the proper card. How do we view those pictures? What, uh, what do we do there? So there's lots of ways to view them. The old way of viewing them is bringing your laptop in the woods. <laughs> I would highly not recommend that anymore. Um, these little card readers that you can plug right into your phone, you can get the one that plugs into your phone, whether it's an Android or an or a Apple phone. This is the only way to go nowadays. It's wicked lightweight, it's tiny. I just throw it in my backpack every single time, whether I'm hiking to check cameras or just hunting. What about the standalone units? Some guys don't like them, don't like using the little uh, card readers to their phone. They still think uh, that this is the way to go. This is kind of like an uh, upgraded version than using your like old point and shoot camera. Yeah. Um, you can view them on one of these card viewers. This is a touch screen, so you can zoom into the pictures and view them that way as well. Gotcha. You can't save them on this. This is just a viewer only. Gotcha. Um, and as far as other accessories go, what else are we needing here is to, to help you get the best picture? Sometimes you can use these. Um, this is uh, an angled camera mount. This one in particular goes on a t-post um, they also come with uh, just a screw in the in the back end that you can screw right into a tree and then you can mount your camera to this side and angle it whichever way you want and then up and down left and right so that way you could use this as your security as well you could climb the tree or put uh, pegs in the tree hang it high in the tree and then angle it down onto your spot and then pull the pegs out if you want to go this route. Sometimes you're on a really steep hill and you need that extra angle. Uh, these are good for that. But uh, if you're in an elk area, elk love toying with your cameras. Yeah. Even if you have a tiny bit of scent from your sweat or anything, I've noticed the elk bump these a lot and it'll, it'll bump your camera and twist it. So these aren't really ideal in the elk woods, but they work great for deer in any deer situation really. Yeah, I noticed um, just a little pro tip. If you're setting up uh, cameras in bear country and you, either if you are hunting bears and you're baiting bears, if you touch any bait and then set up your camera after, your camera's gonna get chewed on and it probably is not gonna survive. Um, this would be an awesome setup to get that, the camera off the ground a little bit. So bear, will, he'll know it's there, but it's probably not worth his trouble to climb that tree and mess with it. And I've noticed as well, if you touch that camera, the elk will also, they'll, they'll lick it to death. So um, these are awesome. Yeah, and then uh, I think the only thing we really haven't gone over is just uh, organizing yourself. Um, we have lots of different uh, SD card cases. This one is particularly a HME one. Uh, we also have Stealth Cam ones that have an orange gasket on it. This is a good way to keep organized. And I think the only thing we're really missing is maybe like a saw and some pruners to clear out your area so that way the debris is not setting off your cameras for yep. all those wind pictures. Yep, which are always fun to delete. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Um, thanks for tuning in with us. Uh, if you have any questions on trail cameras or how to set them up or what you need, uh, feel free to give us a call. We'd love to help you out. We've got everything to get you covered, get you started, whether you're uh, beginner like me or more advanced like Jason, we've got you covered. Uh, give us a call or visit us at blackolist.com. Thank you.